Hi, good morning. We're at the final phase of our basement wall waterproofing. I'm going to walk you through a few things that we're doing with uh, Poly Walls Arroyo drain system, how it's installed, uh, the drain outlets, and how the water actually gets away from the, the wall. So I'll walk you through these steps. So as you can see, we have Poly Walls liquid waterproofing. We actually applied two layers of this liquid waterproofing first, let it dry for about a day, and we're down here now getting, re getting ready to apply the Arroyo drain system. Um, and we'll show you how that works. But basically this, this material we're using here is a stay put product that is basically a contact cement. And that contact cement will be used to bond the Arroyo drain system to the wall. So I just wanted to give you guys a close up of this first two foot section that gets installed. You can see it on the wall there, uh, the first two feet that goes up. Um, what you have here is this dimple mat. You've got the smaller dimples on the top of the mat and then these larger ones on the bottom. Uh, I'm not really sure why they do the larger on the bottom, but I assume it's because it's probably where the, the most amount of uh, water volume will be coming out of the wall. Um, and then, of course, it's got this real thick filter fabric over the top of it to prevent any sediment from getting uh, against the dimple mat. And then, of course, the plastic, thick plastic here that uh, uh, will prevent any damage to the liquid waterproofing, the home stretch product that we've applied on the wall. Um, and you can kind of see here, they, they do give you a little bit of shingle overlap. Um, you know, my recommendation for poly wall is to give us a little bit more to work with, like five or six inches. They only give you about two inches here. So um, as you can see here, as it, as it comes up the wall, we've got a little bit of overlap for that material. Um, it does a job. It just might be a little better if we had five or six inches. Um, and then the, this next section and all the, the sections after that are four feet tall uh, by 50 feet long. All the rolls come in 50 feet long uh, rolls. So. Again, if you're going to cut it, my recommendation is just to, to cut it and then, then overlap some filter fabric over the top of it, and I think you'll be in good shape. Uh, this, this four foot section, you can see here, um, again, it's got, it's got the fabric over the top to overlap against the, the last layer. And these drain, uh, these drain pieces that uh, they recommend you install at 20 or 25 feet. Yeah, actually, get this backwards. If you uh, if you install these things and you want to move them around, they actually slide uh, pretty pretty easily on the wall. Um, move them back and forth. So uh, again, these these drain outlets are what we're going to tie our uh, PVC French drain into. And then when you get to the very end of your run, this is basically the outlet drain uh, that will tie into um, whatever you're going to drain it into. Uh, here we're going to have a lot of washes to to drain our water into. And this this piece here, so. You can see here I've got this, uh, this connected to our Schedule 40 PVC. Um, we chose to use the, the Schedule 40 because it's just a much thicker pipe, much more durable um, when these guys backfill. Probably not, uh, they just dump and rock and you just got to try to protect yourself as much as possible, which is ultimately why we're putting this drain mat on to begin with. Um, this drain pipe does have holes and the holes are on the bottom and there's a reason for that. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive why the holes would go on the bottom, but um, as we've shown you, we've got water leaching out of the rock. There's a potential for groundwater to get underneath here. So any water that gets down, uh, we wanna, want those drain holes uh, facing downward. This, this particular pipe has holes on both sides, which I don't know if you can really see it here, but the, the drain holes run along the bottom, uh, two sets of holes. And then what we're gonna do is we've got filter fabric. Um, we're gonna put, uh, a uh, one to two inch leech rock on top of this pipe, and then we'll wrap this like a burrito, and I'll show you uh, down here. All right, so we've got a 13 foot tall wall. Uh, we've got our two foot section, two four foot sections, and then about a 16 or 18 inch section. And basically what we have here, we do have a penetration through this wall, which we will use the, uh, the 2200 joint fill around this pipe to make sure that that thing's sealed off on all sides. There was really no way of avoiding it. This is a pipe that, uh, it's gonna be the uh, sewer line coming up uh, from the first floor level and there's just no way around it. Um, it'll drain down into the basement level of the first floor and pick up all those drains down there. So as you can see behind me, we've got these, these tall uh, four inch PVC pipes. We've got them in multiple locations. Uh, we chose to do this because if this pipe ever got clogged for any reason, uh, we're gonna have a clean out at the top so you can run a camera down it, you can run something down there to uh, clean those pipes out if necessary. Um, and again, this Schedule 40 pipe is so much thicker and stronger uh, to prevent just, just another accident from guys backfilling. There's a lot of rock, a lot of decomposed granite out here, and we don't want it puncturing this pipe. Um, same, same reason, we don't want uh, 
the liquid waterproofing behind here punctured. It's just going to create a place for, for problems to occur. Um, there's, there's multiple types of drain pipe. You can use the four inch drain tiles. That stuff would crush with the amount of, of soil that we have above here. Again, 13 feet of, uh, of retaining. Uh, so that, that would actually crush that pipe. And schedule 20 is probably the next thing up from there. It's just, just not, uh, it's not going to withstand the weight and the, the way these guys typically backfill and you're putting plate tampers and jumping jacks on top of it. Uh, it's just not the, you want to try to use the thickest material as possible. So again, these drain cleanouts, we've got them probably every 30, 40 feet. Um, and it kind of is situation dependent of the walls and how they're located and how everything's built. As you can see behind me, we've got a lot of curves and a lot of radiuses. Uh, follow me over here so I can show you a little bit more about what we're, what we're doing. Um, this gives you a real good idea of what we're doing here. You got to try to hold this filter fabric up while you're doing this. And you can see behind me, these guys already start having this, this leech rock installed. And eventually this will get wrapped down the top. <clears throat> And then this will get placed over the top, actually reverse lamp like this. And then over top, it just creates a burrito and it's just protecting that uh, pipe from any sediment getting inside of it. So uh, just the whole thing here is just trying to protect the structure, trying to protect the drainage system uh, that we're using here. Again, a lot of radius walls, a lot of changes in elevation and a lot of changes in the structure itself. We've got a stairwell going through here. So we run our drains all the way through here and eventually this is going to run out to the outside which will show you where we're running the uh, the outlet side. Uh, we tried to basically pick a point in the middle and then pitch the drain uh, to, to drain on each side of the house. So uh, as you can see behind me, we've got another retaining wall here. And even though this is not part of the house, this is actually just a retaining wall. This eventually will be filled up with dirt and we'll have plants and things like that up there. but. Again, it's just, it's such a big wall and there's so much liability as a builder to try to protect this wall system. Um, you just want to do the best possible thing that you can. And we get a lot of criticism for, for doing something to this extent, but at the end of the day, I'm the one that's got to put my name on it. My company's got to honor the warranty. So we want to do the best thing possible, uh, not only from a liability perspective, but to deliver the best possible product to the customer. Um, so as you can see here, we've got when we built this retaining wall, we started out with 16 inch block and then it changes to 12 inch block. Um, and the reason being is because the, the walls are, are uh, so tall that they've got to use thicker block as they go up. So it creates a challenge in waterproofing. And you can see this ledge behind us, how we've kind of wrapped the Arroyo drain up it. Um, and then again, <clears throat> we've got th these big six inch pipes are for um, basically an NDS uh, catch basin that'll be up at the top to collect any surface water. Um, and we'll also run uh, we are going to run a four inch uh, perforated drain up at the top as well. Uh, and then back behind me, you can see this is these pipes here and there's one more down there. Uh, these pipes are all for uh, clean outs, just in case something gets clogged. Um, you just want to have that option, the ability to do that. One interesting thing here is that when we do a retaining wall, we've got uh, these weep holes inside of here. Uh, so it's kind of, we've got multiple layers of, of waterproofing, multiple layers of uh, leach rock and how we're protecting everything. But at, at the end of the day, um, the engineer called for these weep holes at a certain spacing. So uh, you can see we've got our burrito drain covered up down below here. Uh, we're going to have some dirt that goes in between and then we'll have more leach rock and another layer of filter fabric that goes over the top to protect these weep holes from uh, getting clogged up. So that's, that's basically our system. Again, a lot of protection, a lot of different ways to get water out of the, uh, you know, this, this, this uh, landscaping and planter area. So you just want to do as many things as possible to try to protect yourself and deliver a good product to the customer. So you can see it's, it's you know, you got a lot of, lot of curves that you got to deal with and, and things aren't cut and dry. So you just got to take your time, be careful. Uh, cut this stuff up as pop if you need to. This is a good indication right here of what we've done we, where we've had to cut it and we've uh, uh, used that stay put product to glue this filter fabric over the top at the joint. Again, just protecting that joint from any sediment from getting inside of there. Again, you can see how what we've had to do here. It's just, it's, it's sort of complicated and you just gotta, you know, cut the pipe and wrap it all the way around. You can see how we've got it wrapping all the way around the inside of this wall. Um, a lot of challenges with elevation changes and things like that. So follow me through here. And you can see that we've got, we basically have two pipes in this area that are running down through here and it'll all converge uh, back at this point over here. So we've got them tying together at the two locations, as you can see here. And then what we have is we've got a pipe running out 
to the outside here. Uh, this is the lower area of our basement and eventually, um, like you can see here, we've got this four inch pipe running through. Uh, we've placed uh, six inch sleeves in the, in the retaining wall as we were building it. Just allowed us places for the uh, uh, pipe to pass through without having to core the actual wall. So um, this is basically gonna run out into a wash on the outside and uh, threw a culvert on the other end of the property. But that's how we're draining it out. And we've got the same situation on the other side where uh, it's a little less complicated, but same principle that uh, the pipe is, is basically punching through a retaining wall and, and eventually will make it down into a, a wash. I appreciate everyone uh, following us uh, during this basement waterproofing process. It's been, uh, it's been a learning uh, tool for us. Hopefully you guys have learned some things from it and uh, follow us on the rest of the uh, project progress and we'll talk to you soon.